for the biggest problem for Hamas is their um, luck. They succeed more than they can manage. So in 19, in 2006, they succeeded to win the elections, even though they knew that they didn't want, they actually didn't want to vote to, 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 to be uh, the majority. Okay. Exactly. They, they just found themselves, oh, we are government. So what should we do? Okay, we do what we can. In 2007, when they attacked Fatah uh, and the Palestinian Authority forces, they wanted to eliminate just one part of Fatah, uh, the preventive security and others and so on. But they wanted to keep cooperation with others. But then suddenly they succeeded and then, oh, we took over Gaza Strip. What should we do? They succeeded. They didn't want this. And on 7th of October, and I assume that Hamas wanted one thing. They wanted to eliminate Gaza uh, brigades, which is, they have always threatened to do so, and to have maybe 20 hostage, hostages, 20, 30, maximum, maybe maximum 20. But they ended up with 200 something, with civilians, with many killed, civilians and military. And this is success for them that they didn't expect. So, so the intentions of Hamas is are always uh, there, but how they succeed is a problem for them. And 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 that's that's the big thing. So and 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 that's why I think they didn't uh, 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 Hamas didn't expect that they will succeed to this extent. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies. And today I'm talking to Dr. Abdelhadi Alishla, who is a Palestinian Swedish researcher in Stockholm. He researches how armed non-governmental actors negotiate power and legitimacy in society. And he is the author of rebel governments in the Middle East and of trust in divided societies, state institutions and governance in Lebanon, Syria and Palestine. Today, because of the horrendous things happening in Gaza, I want to discuss with him the role of Hamas, what this group is, what it represents and um, what it wants and how this, how the current events will probably shape Palestinian society in the future. Uh, Abdel Hadi, thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pascal. Well, first of all, uh, we talked just a little bit, but what currently is going on is beyond imagination. And you yourself, if I understand correctly, you're from Gaza and you have you have family in, 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 in Gaza. So this this entire genocide that's going on touches you very directly. But if we can just talk a little bit about Hamas and you researched Hamas very intensely. What is this group? Where does it come from? And, and how does it interlink with the other institutions like the PLO or Fatah? Can you, can you give us a rundown? Yeah, well, Hamas is um, an non-state actor, if we want to define it in the beginning. And, and, and it started as a reaction to the failure of the Arab leftists and the Arab nationalists in the uh, uh, late 70s. After the 67 war, um, when Israel took over Sinai and, and, and Golan Heights in Syria and the West Bank and Gaza Strip, there were among the Palestinians and among the Arabs that the leftists have failed to achieve something. And that's why after the Islamic revolution, so people start to think like, why don't we have something like this? Because the, 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 uh, the, the sentiment at that time that's which is like more to the Islamic uh, doctrine, like the we need to to do jihad, we need to to go back to the to follow Islam and Islamic rules to to achieve victory. But then in in in, in late seventies, early um eighties, a group of Muslim uh, brotherhood uh, or let's say a sympathizer with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt started to get together. Um, and Hamas was created actually as opposition to Fatah because Fatah was a secular, uh, was nationalist, but then it, Hamas came and they here it 
in the Palestinian society, especially in Gaza, there was some tension between the two who can mobilize more. And, and that's when, when Hamas started to mobilize informally and to be uh, formed. But uh, later on, they, they started to extend their presence to civil society organizations, charity organizations. They, they were created then, uh, they had uh, uh, on Mujamma al-Islah in, in Gaza City. Uh, it was their first civil society organization. Um, they started to be in most, uh, they started to Islamic University, create, establish the Islamic University. So Hamas created a new phenomena in the Palestinian society as an unstate actor, as a group or a network of civil society organizations, but also as uh, service providers, because these civil society organizations had schools later on, um, uh, healthcare uh, uh, centers and so on. But when, when the Oslo Accord was, and the first Intifada uh, uh, um, was signed, uh, Hamas was barely having any weapons. Actually, the military wing of Hamas was established like in late, in the beginning of 90s. So they didn't have a chance to do something. They didn't have the chance, but but it, they, they are effective in, in different ways. So they established their military wing at that time. But in 1993, uh, the Palestinian Authority, um, they cracked down them. They killed dozens of them. They tortured hundreds of them. Um, uh, and I'm talking about the Palestinian Authority, led by Fatah. Uh, and, and, and by 1999, which is the time when Oslo was to finish in September 1999, and the Palestinian state would have been created based on the Oslo Accord and two-state solutions, um, Hamas was very weak. Hamas didn't have any, barely maybe few members, hundreds of members. Uh, they are un inactive. Their main uh, activities were in the mosque to hang out leaflets about Islam and about good behavior and uh, some political statement, but not active. So here we are talking about like um, Hamas is not a member of the PLO, which is recognized by the international community. I um, I don't know what is the international community. We, we, we need to redefine the concept of international community because the international community here is, is it the only, the West only, or it's everybody in the war? Um, and, 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 but, but PLO is recognized as the legitimate representative of the Palestinians um, uh, in, in, in the war. But Hamas is not member of them. Uh, uh, Islamic Jihad is not member of them, uh, and, and that's why uh, it's we have two agendas: the agenda in the Palestinian struggle, the uh, agenda of Fatah, and that's leading the PLO, which has very low trust among the Palestinians. And you have the Hamas agenda, which is which tells us we have tried every means, we have tried the Oslo Accord, we have tried the peace but we didn't get anything. So we need to try the Islamic Jihad or the struggle or and the, the military um, in different ways, in different shape. Because Hamas says, I am in Palestine, in a Palestinian land, Gaza, and that's why I want to fight. And that's my agenda. So here is a, a bit. So Hamas in principle is not only a political party, uh, they won the elections in 2006, um, majority of, of in a in a very democratic process. By the way, actually, the Palestinian election in 2006, according to the international election observers, it's one of the most clean in the world. Uh, I think Jimmy election. Carter even was one of the observers, right? Yeah, Jimmy Carter was there. Uh, a few hundreds uh, Europeans were there as well. And it was one of the most clean in the world uh, elections. And Hamas won. But of course, the, inter the European Union and then the Americans and Israel, they boycotted the Palestinian government uh, formed by Hamas. And they actually didn't give them one US dollar. 
and one in Andorra. And can you maybe, you know, on YouTube, there's 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 a lot of talk about Hamas actually being helped by Netanyahu and by by Israel to to become what it is today. Is there any is there credibility to that, or what was the dynamic between that? Because I, I believe that there was a, also a goal of Israel to undermine the PLO, right? And Hamas was kind of you know the enemy of the PLO. In in okay, Netanyahu came to power in 1996. Uh, the first time. And as soon as he came, he opened uh, what we call it the Innafag, uh, the tunnel under Al-Aqsa Mosque. And it was a red line. And then Arafat at that time uh, uh, gave the green light for, um, let's say, mini intifada for a few days, where 88 Palestinians were killed a few, I, I think 16 Israeli were killed as well in this uh, mini intifada because the aim of Netanyahu was from the beginning to undermine the two-state solution. That was the beginning. And in that time, in the early 90s and even until the uh, first, the, for, in the second intifada, Hamas aim was not two-state solution. It's all Palestine. So this is aligned with that. So in order, because have been, uh, Netanyahu have been satanizing Hamas for a long time. Satanizing. And satanizing from Satan. Yeah. That's... Which is a term that's... Demonizing. In, in the evil, mm. the evil of the world. And, and, and that's why um, Netanyahu by strengthening Hamas, it gives him pretext always that there is some there is no party for peace. There is no collaborators for peace in the Palestinian uh, uh, society. And by that, when he strengthened Hamas, he keep this pretext alive, but he undermining also the Palestinian authority at the same time, led by Fatah and PLO. Which he, which, which he achieved. I mean, the Palestinian Authority now is so weak. It has no trust. I mean, if, if the elections happen today, the Palestinian Authority will never actually win majority in the elections, uh, or Fatah, or PLO. But so, so in principle, from outside, we will look, oh, Netanyahu is helping Hamas. But from inside, if we go just closer, we will say, no, he's not helping. He is actually undermining two-state peaceful settlement between Israel and Palestine. Yeah, but it, this is it, there's this classic dynamic of conflicts where, you know, the, the doves on both sides would like to cooperate and the hawks on both sides start cooperating because they have the same problem solu uh, problem solving strategy, which is we want to kill the other one. And therefore, they, they, they almost help each other by giving each other cards, you know, over the over the deck so that they can have their war. Is this a case of that? No, not really, because okay, because the the, the uh, Hamas have already in two thousand seventeen agreed to two state solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, solution. So Hamas has changed their carpet in two thousand seventeen, and they removed uh, the part calling about eliminating of Israel, and uh, they have removed all uh, articles that could be interpreted as anti semitic as well. Okay. They removed Where? all of uh, they removed all of these articles in their uh, car, um, carter. So, so Hamas, in one principle, they are not um, uh, uh, against two state solution. Actually, uh, one thing that's interesting that have been uh, absent is, and I invite some of the researchers to analyze this speech of the Hamas military wing chief. Uh, Muhammad al daif of 7th of October. Because surprisingly, he used and he cited the international law and international humanitarian law and, and the United Nations Security Council and United Nations General Assembly resolutions for Palestine. And he said, we are doing this based on international resolutions and according to the international humanitarian law and international um, uh, and the struggle for freedom of Palestine. 
the his went under the carpet because he mentioned this many times. And based on that, there is informal recognition of the two-state solution, of the, of the UN Security Council uh, resolutions and United Nations General Assembly resolutions. But also, Haniya himself, recently, in a few of his uh, uh, speeches every week, uh, weekly speech since the beginning of this uh, uh, genocide, uh, he mentioned that Hamas abide by international law, Hamas abide by United Nations uh, uh, resolutions. So we are here talking about something like not here, not analyzed. That's who are those guys? Why they are doing this? And if they agree on the international UN uh, Security Council resolutions and United Nations General Assembly resolution, why don't we talk to them? So I mean, we we have this case where political actors do have several options, right? Some sometimes political actors just lie outright lying straight into the into a camera sometimes they tell white lies they just don't tell how it is and sometimes they actually believe what they're saying and they have a different narrative so what is it and i need to ask you the question so if the leader of hamas is is citing international law and human international humanitarian law in justifying the 7th of october how how i mean attacking civilians is under all and any circumstances and and a war crime a, a, a crime against uh, humanitarian law. So, what was the seventh of October? I mean, how how does how does this square to you? Well, well, yeah, for for, for me, yeah, I mean, it's uh, attacking civilians. Uh, all civilians should be condemned. I mean, it's uh, very un 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 and and I'm 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 why I'm from Gaza and my family is suffering, but and um I have lost friends, family, but attacking civilians is something un. Um, uh, forgivable uh, from one side, but that, that doesn't justify, for example, committing genocide. And to be uh, more clear, which is something that's happened, like it has it has been said many times, actually, by Hamas leader, that Hamas target at that time, and 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 just for for the fact that I am one of the few guys, researchers and so on, who have stood against political Islam in general since 2007. Um, even uh, at, at some point, Hamas uh, uh, um, Hamas itself in Gaza wasn't happy with 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 my research, with my work, with my activism. Um, and I'm still I'm against political Islam in general. <laughs> uh, I'm against that uh, Hamas control of Gaza in uh, in a democratic state. They can share power after elections. They can be part after elections, but the just blank control of Gaza in this way, I'm I'm, I'm not happy with that, and I, I don't I don't see that's a democratic way. Um, so just to put these facts here, uh, I'm not also sympathizer with Hamas uh, as a political party. Uh, I'm not at all, um, uh, and, and and we have different ideologies. Um, but to but since I was specialized in this, uh, in, in examining Hamas, studying Hamas. When 7th of October happened, Hamas target was eight bases, military bases. Mm -hmm. that's, but there were, that's... there were the kibbutzim as well. Yeah, no, 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 they were not a target. They said that, Hamas said that. Said that Hamas leader um, in Lebanon, he mentioned that and I think Haniya mentioned some in the first uh, speech. What happened is, and I'm here because I read Hebrew um, uh, news, arts, investigation, New York, and others to put the puzzle in Arabic, and also because we we listened to some rumors in in the Palestinian society. So, in seventh of October, the target was those bases, which is the Gaza Brigades, Israeli, mm -hmm. they want to destroy it. Gaza Brigades actually um, collapsed in two hours. Yes. Totally. Which was something. Then they have this festival. Yes. And it was a surprise for Hamas. It was a surprise for, for the, the fighters. When the fighters actually went there, they killed civilians. And then the Israeli 
uh, tanks and army and helicopters, as we have seen in the reports, that they attacked both Hamas and the civilians. Yes. So this is one thing. But you have 200 members of Hamas, they disobeyed orders. That's and what has been that's what has been said being said in Gaza. So your your interpretation is that the military wing of Hamas was trying to do a targeted attack, but there were there were elements that were not foreseen. Then there was IDF counter strikes, and there were there were militants that didn't obey or that were part exactly. of other groups. That, that's, 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 that's exactly that led to the slaughter. Exactly, that's what happened, because. And, and it's Hamas member, Hamas uh, leader has said that many of the uh, military wings disobeyed orders. And many of them disobeyed orders and they brought civilian hostages. And then after these hours and the collapse of the Israeli military, Palestinians in Gaza militant, other militant groups, they said like, okay, why we don't go? Islamic Jihad went in, uh, Fatah military wing went in also. Uh, then you have Lijan al Muqawm al Shabiya national uh, or, or national uh, co um, uh, committees, uh, resistance committees went in. And those are, we can say like Islamic Jihad is more organized. But when you have Fatah, Katab Shad al Aqsa, you have the and then other groups, smaller groups, they are not organized. They don't have a hierarchy. They don't have strict orders. And in principle, they don't follow the rules of war or rules of engagement in war. So they, those guys have committed the crimes. They have killed civilians, I mean. I mean, and, and, and I, I see this, I'm, I'm telling this, that they have committed the crimes in against civilians, if we base this on rule of engagement, international uh, rule, but that doesn't mean that we should we should see this as whole thing, as seven of October, as uh, 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 comparable to what been happening in Gaza, for example. No. Or or the appropriationality of the reaction. Or the those so so uh, or, or 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 the, the, the that's there were um, targeted crimes against the civilians. So the majority of 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 people killed in the seven of October um, uh, civilians were not killed deliberately. So to to be honest, for example, all I mean all the news that raping women and killing women. We, we have evidence now that's videos that there are some women were killed, but nobody was raped, for example, which is a brutal lie from the Israeli propaganda. Uh, the babies, the 40 babies, according to the New York Times and Haaris, there was only one baby was killed. And we don't know who killed him because it was in Be'iri. And in Be'iri, the Israeli tanks actually fired against homes and houses where Hamas and other hostages shelters. We the, the, the uh, we have evidence that um, Hamas didn't burn, as they say. Uh, we have evidence that um, uh, so 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 the evidence there is 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 is, is it clear that there are lies by the Israeli uh, military, um, and it has been confirmed. Well, the Palestinians have been saying uh, this for many months, many weeks, but the people don't. Uh, 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 believe the Palestinians until Haaretz or New York Times or Washington confirmed that. Yeah, it's it, you know it's also because the seventh of October needs to be as needs to be this horrific in order to function as an excuse now to to commit genocide against the Palestinians. Right, this is the entire narrative explanation of why this happens. But the other part of the narrative, the other leg, is that. Israel is not fighting Palestinian civilians. Israel is fighting Hamas, and Hamas is using hu uh, human shields, right? Hides behind them. Therefore, we have all of these dead. And uh, the, I mean, this is, it's absolutely stupid and dumb to believe anything 
to believe that this in the in this level can happen. But could you maybe talk about the way that Hamas and Palestinian society in general in Gaza in the Gaza Strip how how do they how are they together or not? Well, let, let me first like we have been talking about seven of October uh, mm -hmm. and 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 it's seven of October twenty twenty three. But the problem here with the word is now talking about seven of October as a milestone or a point of uh, of, of different rules. But what about seven of October nineteen forty eight? What about 7 of October 1949? What about 7 of October 1950? What about 7 of October 2017? What about 7 of October 2018? What about 7 of October 2000? What about 7 of October? Actually, I'll tell you a story. Uh, in 10th of October 2000, I was about to die because I was in a school and then I got a ballot, uh, um, uh, uh, a ballot, uh, uh, rubble ballot here in my ears. So that's October, and that was in 2000, and I was in a school. Um, and I'm talking to you here after how many years? The 23 years. So what about 7 of October um, 1996? Uh, 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 what about 7 of October? So why 7 of October? Why we are obsessed with 7 of October 2023? Or it's because for the first time, the Palestinians or Hamas in general have been attacking. So this is worth uh, mentioning. This is worth studying. Mm -hmm. That's who value more. And you know that uh, for all 7th of October since 2023 until 1967 or even 48, uh, majority, 99% of the Palestinians who were killed will, were civilians. So yes. nobody mentioned of this. So if we want to investigate how many massacres uh, the Israeli gangs in before 1948 and then the Israeli army afterwards have committed on October, we will find thousands of thousands of Palestinians. Like if, if we talk about Der Yassin, for example. So these kind of massacres also need to worth mentioning. Absolutely. So the idea of 7th of October here is obsession of 7th of October also justify if we continue discussing it as a milestone will give um um i mean uh, it will be a sexy topic for the israeli propaganda and it it, uh, it will try to cover what the israeli are doing in the gaza strip uh, so so here is the 7th of october and in principle is something um need to be uh, uh, looked in different angles angles and these angles should be from both the palestinian and the Israeli side, because first, the the first principle: no civilian should be killed, no civilian should be suffered, no civilian uh, or babies should be um, dehumanized. So these principles should be for us when we we look at seven October. Now, for your uh, question, uh, in Gaza, in Gaza, you, the and and I I I I have said this many times: Gaza is not one homogeneous group. And people think when they look at Gaza, they look at it as, as a homogeneous group, which is not true because in Gaza, you have the secular, you have the conservative Islamists, you have the political Islamists, you have the Sufi, you have the Shia, yeah, and Shia is a very minority, by the way, and you have the educated, uh, you have the highly educated, you know Gaza is the most highly educated uh, population in the world. If you don't know, they have the most PhDs and master degrees per capita in the world. Uh, 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 illiteracy in Gaza is 0.4. Uh, so it means nobody uh, uh, is unable to read or write. So uh, so all read and write. And 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 you have people who work who are from the, from cities, urban areas, from rural areas. Uh, the majority of people of Gaza are refugees from different cities uh, uh, in Palestine, in Israel now, uh, in, in Pal history Palestine. And here is, is, is this is, and, and you have people from, who returned from uh, uh, diaspora from Tunis and Lebanon in 1994 with Arafat. And you have Palestinians, uh, African, you have, and, and, and you have Palestinians from different orientations. So, Gaza Strip 
is a pot or what I call it is a garden with with dozens of different flowers. And 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 that's why the, you have people who 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 want to have um peaceful settlement. They want to have coexistence of two state solutions. You have others who believe in one state solution. Um, you have others who are with the military struggle. You have others who wanted a peaceful peace settlement, peace process to continue. And you have people who want to migrate. Uh, you have people um, who want military struggle. But all of them agree that this need to end. We cannot stay under the military power of Israel. We cannot stay under the military power of, of or the mercy of an Israeli officer to go to have medical care. If you want to go and get medical care in Israel in, in anywhere in West Bank or even travel abroad, you need to get the military permission. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I, we are in 2023. I mean, why an Israeli officer have to give you a permission to go to seek me medical treatments? Uh, why the Israeli military have to intervene if you need to change your address from one city to another in Palestine? Why, why do you need the military permission if 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 you need to 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 build a house in Gaza, which is which is something that you maybe you do, you didn't know that since 2014, which is recently under Hamas rule in Gaza, which is and not under occupation, that's if you want to rebuild your home, then you, you need to register and then the Israeli army need to review your application. It's so, absolutely lunatic. It's a lunatic situation. It was a lunatic situation before mass carpet bombing of the most densely populated area on earth. And it is even more lunatic now. What I don't understand, what I cannot, what I fail to comprehend is um, the, the dynamics that lead to the fact that now on both sides, everybody will agree that killing civilians and babies is 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 inadmissible. And what's happening is that civilians and babies are being killed the, yeah. the entire time. So this sir this 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 circle of violence that just keeps mm. on the, the onslaught going. So about Hamas, what do you think was the idea of to achieve with this one? And I understand that, like, you know, the, the, the peaceful protest two years ago killed in, in this peaceful protest, 200 Palestinians were killed protesting peacefully on their side of the fence. So I understand yeah. when, when people go, OK, we need to do military struggle. But what do you think was the goal of this? Because this was speculated a lot and it leads to more and more slaughter. And the next question comes later. Yeah, well, in, in 2018, there was this uh, great march of return. It's yes. a peaceful, and Israel killed uh, 300 uh, Palestinians, in one, and, and some of them 100-something on one day. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know if it's a black joke or something. Since then, Hamas vowed to kill the general who gave order and who was actually proud. And he went to the media and said, I am the one who gave order to kill those people. Actually, Hamas went and searched for him in this 7th of October. And they killed him, I guess. Uh, uh, or I don't know, they took him a hostage. I, I'm not sure about this, but they did something to him. So Hamas was targeted, uh, targeting on 7th of October uh, military officers uh, by name. Uh, mm -hmm. High rank by name, so they knew. I mean, uh, uh, them. Um, that's interesting, actually. Uh, fact, given the, uh, the 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 Hamas capabilities at this point. Uh, but what Hamas wanted to deliver from this is two things. What we have been hearing from the people on the ground, their Hamas, uh, and we hear this on on the first week before the ground operation, uh, that's Israel was preparing for a strike against Hamas. Was preparing so, or wasn't? Was. Was. Israel was preparing a strike against Hamas that could end Hamas. So what they say, we what this is, I'm citing them. Uh, I have no contact, but that's what they have been uh, telling me in the Gaza Strip, is we wanted to have lunch 
before uh, we wanted to uh, eat them before they eat us on the dinner on the mm -hmm. we want to eat them on the lunch before they eat us on the dinner okay, so but... that was that was for them that was a strike before they get killed uh, the you know one of the things that don't comprehend is that if you look at the the military strikes that Israel does it is pretty clear that that as a matter of policy, they always kill 10 times more, at least 10 times more Palestinians than what any kind of attack by Hamas does. Like over over the last 30, 40 years. So when I heard that 1,200 or, or so Israelis died, I thought, my God, this will cost at least 14,000, if not more people's lives, because that's just what they do. That's just what happens. And this is exactly what's coming. So how did Hamas believe that this could in any sense help the people of Gaza because it obviously and it does the opposite that's and that's the, not to blame that, them that's just yeah. to say this is what's happening well that that's one that's one of the critique for them actually is that if you strike why don't you tell us so we prepare i mean you know the israeli reaction but for them for hamas which is i'm 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 speculating here here that they wanted to do this strike because they don't want to lose uh, their power just for fun because they know that the, the Israeli are coming. And that's because there have been in the last two or three years have been so much analysis that Israel is planning for ethnically cleanse the Palestinians of Gaza. There are reports about that, that Israel is planning that and they will do that. So Hamas wanted to, 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 to strike before Israel strike. That's what, what that's the speculation here. But also you have others who said, okay, if I stay remain or remain silent, nobody will care. They are managing the siege. Uh, Israel is impos imposing the siege. Uh, people of Gaza are dying from diseases and from lack of medical uh, treatment in Gaza. Uh, Israel, uh, young people are dying in, on the boats uh, to Europe uh, while they are trying to reach uh, other places. Uh, people are dying from suicide, homicide, uh, suicide in Gaza. So, okay. So, this cannot be continued. And for them, for Hamas, that, that's the only way is to make this. So, either you kill us all in, 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 in this way, or we find a solution. So he, they wanted to adapt what maybe possibly said that what Sadat uh, uh, did in 1973. He started the war, knowing that he may win uh, on some paths, but he is not. He he will not ever win over Israel to have all Sinai, for example. But he wanted something, so the peace negotiations start, and this is possibly what Hamas. Uh, 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 a strategy was but they didn't know that's the extent of their success so Hamas problem and, and this is how you say it uh, Hamas problem or the biggest problem for Hamas is their um, luck they succeed more than they can manage so in 19 in 2006 they succeeded to win the elections even though they knew that they didn't want, they actually didn't want to vote to 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 be uh, the majority. Exactly, they they just found themselves. Oh, we are government, so what should we do? Okay, we do what we can. In two thousand seven, when they attacked Fatah uh, and the Palestinian Authority forces, they wanted to eliminate just one part of Fatah, uh, the preventive security and others, and so on. But they wanted to keep cooperation with others. But then suddenly they succeeded and then, oh, we took over Gaza Strip. What should we do? They succeeded. They didn't want this. And on 7 of October, and I assume that Hamas wanted one thing. They wanted to eliminate Gaza uh, brigades, which is they have always threatened to do so, and to have maybe 20 hostage, hostages. 20, 30, maximum, maybe maximum 20. But they ended up with 200 something, with civilians, with many killed, civilians and military. 
and this is success for them that they didn't expect. So, so the intentions of Hamas is are always uh, there, but how they succeed is a problem for them. And 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 that's that's the big thing. So, and 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 that's why I think they didn't uh, 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 Hamas didn't expect that they will succeed to this extent. Uh -huh.